Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process from Warren Buffett who says there seems to be a, some perverse human characteristics that likes to make the easy things difficult and that is true for most of us we try to make the life difficult for us and others. In the last lecture we basically initiated discussion on the spray combustion model and we have jotted down all the assumptions which we will be using for this analysis. And uh, uh, earlier we have uh, looked at the uh, fuel air ratio relationship and uh, let us look at uh, that and see how we can simplify it further and express it. So, uh, if you look at I can cancel this out right, I can write down here as the F rho naught and um, is equal to n naught rho l pi by 6 d naught q I can take out is equal to 1, 1 plus f right. And this uh, we can uh, write it down basically as the n naught is equal to f 1 plus f uh, rho naught by rho l right uh, into 6 by d naught q pi should be there right. So, this is the expression we can get and uh, that basically says that number of droplets per unit volume at uh, in the beginning will be dependent on the density of the mixture, density of the uh, liquid and also the initial diameter of the droplet monodispersed droplet and f is the fuel oxidizer ratio. And we will be uh, basically carrying out uh, mass conservation equation and at uh, this location any location you can say we are talking about initially at uh, this is x is equal to 0 right rho naught uh, v naught uh, a area cross sectional area and uh, this is the density at any location apart from the initial state and average velocity apart from the initial state and uh, of course cross sectional area you can cancel it out and keep in mind that this uh, rho is the density of droplet laden air right and uh, uh, v naught dash is basically the average velocity at x is equal to 0 and v average is equal to average uh, velocity of droplet laden air right uh, at any location at any x location right. So, uh, from this I can get that one that is basically v average divided by v is nothing but your rho by rho naught right. This I can say this is basically I can say this is equation 1 and this I can say equation 2 right. And keep in mind that this average velocity at any location right will be changing it will be basically increasing or decreasing it will be increasing because of fact that your uh, density is decreasing due to the heat addition. So, therefore, the average velocity at any location apart from the initial state it will be increasing along with the x. So, uh, now, we will have to do also the uh, number balance right kind of thing. So, we can write down this is uh, basically 
the n naught n naught is the number density into this is the v average uh, velocity at uh, 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 the initial state and v is equal to n is the number density of the droplet at any location and v is the average. So, you can cancel it out and you can say this is as basically n is equal to n naught v naught divided by v and is equal to if you look at n naught rho uh, by rho naught right. This I can say uh, basically equation uh, kind of 4 I can say and this I can say 3 right. Now, let us consider uh, combining this above 2 equation of course, I have already derived this thing right. Uh, this is equation 4 right and uh, combining this above 2 equations equation 2 and 3 and energy equation across the element d x we can write down as basically rho v because at any location this is the average velocity C p d t by d x into a into d x this is the uh, volume right is equal to q dot triple dash the heat release into a by d x you can basically cancel it out and uh, keep in mind that this v is what uh, what we have assumed this v is a will be changing with respect to time and then whenever it will be marching with the x right. So, uh, basically this v dash will be nothing but d x by d t right that is the velocity with uh, along the x direction which will be. So, uh, keep in mind that uh, q dot triple dash heat release rate and uh, right. So, you can also uh, write it down simplifying this I can write down rho C p d t by d t is equal to q dot triple dash and this is equal to n m uh, dot f into delta S c number density that number of droplets and this is this is basically uh, mass consumption right mass burning per unit droplet right into delta S c is the heat of combustion this is basically heat of combustion right. So, heat is rate I have already uh, written there right uh, that equation I can uh, really get and this will be equation I can say 6 right because q dash is nothing but that. <coughs> so, what we need to do is uh, basically uh, that we will have to relate this quasi steady state droplet uh, vaporizations and you know kind of things into here right and or the combustion right vaporization or combustion right and do that. So, uh, if you look at we can get basically we know that f is nothing but your rho alpha by r s ln b c plus 1 I can write down right and uh, that is is nothing but your like uh, you can see what I need I need basically m dot f that means the area has to be multiplied. So, if I want to write down this m dot f is equal to basically I will have to multiply it by 4 pi r s uh, square. So, I will multiply it by 4 pi r s square. So, this will cancel it out right. I will uh, also look at this uh, 2 r s is nothing but uh, d. So, I can write down this as basically m dot f is nothing but 2 pi d 
right rho alpha uh, ln bc plus 1 right this I can write down. Now, this is uh, if you look at I can also uh, take the Lewis number equal to 1 and then write down this alpha uh, k alpha is nothing but your kg by cp right. So, I can write down this is 2 pi d kg by cp ln bc plus 1 right and this I can write down this as pi d right 2 kg by cp uh, ln bc plus 1 rho l I can divide rho l right. If you recognize this term right this term particularly right this is coming from the burning rate right. So, uh, we know the burning rate is basically 8 kg by rho l c p l n b plus c uh -huh. b plus 1 right. This is your burning rate constant right already we have derived for the quiescent uh, you know atmosphere conditions right. So, therefore, I can write down here very simply that is m dot f is nothing but your pi d by rho l k by 4 whereas, k I have already written let me write down again k g by rho l c p l n b c plus 1. Now, I will uh, let us say this is equation 7 right and uh, we have already seen that n is equal to n is equal to n naught rho by rho naught from equation what it was 2 or something 4 from equation 4. I can get this right and this n naught is nothing but your f 1 plus f rho naught by rho l right 6 by pi d naught q into rho by rho naught. So, rho naught will cancel it out right and I will get basically f by 1 plus f uh, rho by rho l 6 by pi d naught q and this is I can say this is 8 right and uh, n already we know we know that m uh, that f that is 7 and we can put this here uh, and uh, then the equation by using equation uh, 6, 7 and 8 we can get of course, uh, we can get this equation by using equation uh, 7 and uh, this is basically 6 and 8 right. We can have that is k is uh, this constant this is droplet uh, combustion rate or con uh, con constant right and 3a by this. Now, this equation has to be uh, basically as 9 has to be solved right and uh, let us uh, look at that uh, what we need to understand that d is this d which will be varying and this will be following the d square law right. So, uh, therefore, we can write a droplet diameter will vary by d square law uh, that is d is equal to d naught square minus k t and the boundary and initial condition will be basically t is equal to 0 d is equal to d naught 
and t is equal to t naught right and uh, like uh, what we will do we will have to equation 9 we need to solve equation 9 uh, is to be solved right that is uh, d t by d t temperature with respect time is equal to 3 f 2 f plus 1 k delta s c by c p d naught q into d right. So, what we will do we will integrate this one right by uh, this is basically 9 by integrating we can get uh, that is t is equal to uh, 3 f 2 1 plus f this is basically constant and uh, keep in mind that here what we will be using we will be using this is d naught square minus k t root over that I will be using here right this portion right this portion I will be using that. So, uh, if you do that then what will happen then this is of course a constant k uh, I can t I can integrate t is equal to uh, 3 f by 2 f plus 1 then k delta s c by c p d naught q and uh, we will have to basically integrate it. So, therefore, d square minus k t right 3 by 2 uh, then minus 2 by 3 1 over k and plus c right and when you put this boundary condition t right by applying this boundary condition right what you will get if t is this thing this will be 0 right this will be 0 yes or no this will be 0. So, therefore, d naught square this one will cancel it out this two will go away right and uh, no, not do this is true because this 3 by 2 right. So, therefore, this will cancel it out whole thing. So, therefore, you will get basically c what I will be getting and what will be this here this will be t naught right c will be t naught and uh, keep in mind that this also will be cancel it out this k will be cancelling out this will be cancelling out and this will be cancelling out right c will be t naught plus f divided by 1 plus f uh, delta s c by c p right this is the t you will be getting. So, then you put that uh, in the uh, this uh, equation I can say this is 10 right and then uh, get that here. So, you will get by putting this constant here and by simplifying by uh, including constant and simplifying the above equation we can have this relationship t is equal to t naught f divided by 1 plus f delta s c divided by c p and uh, in the bracket 1 minus d divided by d naught q. So, this you will get right and keep in mind that this is dependent and d is uh, you know varying right along with the x. So, therefore, temperature also will be varying right and it goes to power 2 and adiabatic flame temperature we know the t adiabatic is nothing but t naught plus f uh, divided by 1 plus f delta s c by c p this we had done earlier. So, when I will substitute this in equation uh, 11 and this let us say 12 I can use equation 12 in equation 1 and uh, I can get this expression see by using equation 12 in 
equation 11 we can have right, this expression which is looks to be very simple one and uh, right. So, and uh, what we will be looking at we are getting basically this one. Now, we will be interested in finding out the zone length that means this reaction whatever is taking place in this zone when this droplet uh, will be consumed completely that is the uh, distance we can find out the length of the combustors or the we can find out or the reactors. So, this L r I can say this is V average into d t because this is changing this velocity will be changing and this is from 0 to T b. T b is your droplet bonding time T b is the droplet uh, lifetime you can say lifetime that means at the this a time uh, in which the droplet uh, diameter becomes 0 right due to the conjunction of the uh, fuel. So, uh, what we will do we, we can uh, really put that thing you know expression and then you will have to integrate because already we have done this uh, v right I can say that we know that uh, v average I can express in terms of temperature right uh, by the mass conservation right from the looking at densities uh, I can do that this is v naught average by v average is equal to t naught by t right. So, I, I know this expression right for this thing I can get that into here in this expression let us say this is uh, the equation I think is it 12 right and this is 13 and then by using this equation and 12 13 you can get this expression. I will leave that uh, to uh, uh, deriv derive this thing and keep in mind there is a T b is uh, basically d is equal to d naught square minus k t. So, uh, therefore, uh, at t b right at t b that uh, what will be d? d will be 0 right at t b d will be 0. So, therefore, uh, this will be t b t b is nothing but your uh, d square not, not divided by k right which will be integrating you know over 0 to this. So, uh, when you will do that you will arrive at a relationship like this and uh, where it is uh, basically dependent on the initial uh, the velocity of uh, the average velocity of the mixture and initial droplet diameter square and also the temperature uh, the temperature or the flame temperature and inlet temperature. So, uh, the combustion intensity uh, we need to find out it can be uh, determined very easily by considering that uh, I this intensity is basically q dot triple dash is rho naught and uh, v naught a c p and t adiabatic minus t naught and divided by whatever is happening here is L r right. So, uh, into area. So, this area will cancel it out and you can get a very simplified relationship right that is rho v naught c p t adiabatic minus t naught divided by L r. So, by this you can really find out what is the intensity because the intensity uh, basically goes inversely with the length of the uh, uh, reactor which will ensure the uh, complete burning of the droplet. So, therefore, if this is uh, smaller right if L r is smaller that means I will be higher right intensity will be higher. So, that is the thing we should keep and if the temperature is uh, higher I will be higher. So, also V naught will be higher I will be higher right. So, uh, very simple relationship you can get and then you can derive and this is keep in mind not very accurate, but however it can be used for design purposes right. So, um, what I would suggest you look at one example and with this I will stop over and uh, thank you very much listening to this lecture.